Good morning, welcome to church. Let's worship God together. At this point of the service, we are going to come around at just a time of prayer where we're going to pray for the needs that are going on in our church at the moment, but also the wider church that is going on around the world at the moment as well. So will you join with me as we pray together? Father, we thank you that you are a good God 
who wants to bestow good gifts on his children. And Lord Jesus, at this time, we pray for the many different prayer requests that we as a church have received. Father, people that are feeling the strain at the moment financially. Father, where people are feeling the strain physically um, and emotionally, oh God. Father, we pray that at this time, that God, as you said in your word, that you will pour out your spirit. That, Father, that we will see you move in a greater way than we've ever seen you before. And that, Lord Jesus, at this time, that people will know that you are with them. That, God, that you care for them. That, God, that you want the very best for them. And that, Lord Jesus, that ultimately they will see you for who you are, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So, Father, we pray. Bless us for the rest of this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing it, hallelujah. Sing it, hallelujah. 
Church. Oh, it's an absolute privilege and a pleasure to be able to come to you and talk to you like this. I just thank God for all the communication you've been able to have at this terrible time. Because there's Pete and I, and of course we've got Rosie, you know, who's great, but she's not children. <laughs> and, um, and I just want to thank God for this beautiful weather, which has obviously helped us all. And enabled us to have the communication through the Sunday, Tuesdays and Thursdays, which we look forward to every week. And seeing all your faces on a Sunday is just amazing. Just keep safe because we love you and I can't wait to get back for all them hugs. <laughs> Hi Church, really miss all the greetings on a Sunday. A lot of time we can't remember people's names, but at the end of the day, we're all God's children and we all love you. And at the end of the day, we know just keep safe and stay. We all know we're in God's hands. And he's at the end of the day, he's the victor. So stay safe. Stay safe, church. God bless. Love you all. Kisses. Hello, everyone. This is Ola and Grace, the Super's family from Morton. And we just want to say hi to the church today. Lyle, that's a beautiful artwork in your hand. What's that? It's my earth and I made it out of Tony's football. Out of Tony's football? That has been keeping you busy schooling at home. Fantastic, well done. Like, I tell you, what have you been up to this week? So I've been up to playing with my family, playing games, winning most of them, and just enjoying this time with God. Fantastic, Ola. What would you like to say to the church? Yeah, we miss you all. Everybody try to keep safe. Keep safe, fantastic. And from myself, I've been enjoying playing football with the boys in the garden, playing tennis, cooking, and guess what? Becoming a teacher in the making. And in the meantime, we would like to uh, look forward to seeing everyone, really. We can't wait to see you face to face again. And from the Summers family, we are saying bye. 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 Cut, cut, cut. Hey, church, it's Vic. I hope you're all okay. I hope you're all looking after yourselves, you're all eating well, and you're all exercising. Hey, you know, there's a lockdown. We're, we're now able to do unlimited exercise outdoors. So that means there's absolutely no excuse whatsoever. So you should all be exercising. So I miss you guys. I miss worshiping together in church. I miss totally annoying the people who are, who are around me when I'm singing my head off. Um, I miss, our hugs, I miss hugging everybody. Our poor Jazz is being hugged about 50 times a day at the moment. And any time I walk towards her, she's like, Mum, not another hug. But on a serious note, Church, you know, this time that we're in the last two months, you know, it's just been very crazy. I'm not gonna lie, it's been very challenging at times. There's been a lot of change here in my life since lockdown. But you know, amidst the chaos, the craziness, the uncertainty, the pain and the suffering that's going on worldwide right now, I'm choosing to believe God's word. I'm choosing to believe his promise that this situation that was intended for bad, the situation that was intended 
for harm intended for evil, that he's working now to take that situation and turn it for good. He's working. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm choosing to believe and stand firm on that word. And I'm sure you guys are too. Okay, I've gone way over my time um, that Luke gave me to do this video, obviously. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all when we're all back together again. I can't wait. It's just going to be such the most amazing day. In the meantime, look after each other. Look after yourselves. Look after this. Look after this. Look after this. Keep this up, no matter what. Keep this up. And make sure you're exercising. I love you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Well, how good is it again to see a bunch of our families at Life Church? And we do miss you all so, so much, but it's so special to be able to see uh, some of you this morning. Hey, just a couple of notices that I want to share with you, uh, which has got some really, really exciting things coming on. And the first one is this we are going to be launching Alpha Online. We've all got questions. Why am I here? What's the point? What difference does my life make? Why do things that are so bad for us taste so good? Hey Siri, do you pray? I don't have an answer for that. How can I live life to the full? What can I really trust? What's my purpose? What do you think happens when you die? You're going straight to the gulags. Does anyone hear my prayer? What's for dinner? What will make me happy? Why don't good things last forever? What is God really like? Does anyone else even ask themselves these questions? Hey everyone, I've got an amazing Alpha Online group here. Uh, a better place to ask life's big questions. Ask Alpha. super excited to be able to, in this season where people are searching and people are looking, to be able to offer the Alpha course online where people can join us via Zoom and different groups throughout the week. So if you want any information, I want you to head to mylifechurch.co.uk forward slash Alpha and you can sign up there. Maybe you want to go on Alpha, maybe you want to refresh yourself about why we believe what we believe. Maybe you've got friends that you who have been asking about church and what this is all about and, and your faith and your journey and why you have peace and hope will invite them to Alpha. It's going to be super easy. They can just watch a video and then join in from the comfort of their home. And we really, really pray as a team that in this season, we're going to see more and more men and women one into the kingdom of God through this. So if you want any more information, please head to the website, mylifechurch.co.uk forward slash Alpha and pray with us as we, as we spread the word, as we get the news out there, that this is going to accomplish so much for the kingdom of God. Hey, the other thing I want to just remind you of is that every Sunday directly after the service, our kids team host a kids Zoom for all of our, all of our kids who are aged 5 to 11. So you can join in parents, you should be receiving details throughout the week. So kids, after this, there's a special Zoom just for you, which I know Hal and the team are so looking forward to welcome you on to. And they're going to have so much fun this morning. Hey church, now's the time to come around the Word of God together. So get your Bible ready, get your notepad, and we're going to lean in for part three of Hearing from God. Well, good morning church. It's really great to be sharing with you again this morning, this lovely Sunday morning. Um, we're going through our Hearing from God series, and I really hope that you're being blessed by this. Aaron did a great job unpacking uh, who the Holy Spirit is, because it's through the Holy Spirit that we hear from God. Um, and Luke did a great job last Sunday unpacking how he speaks us through his written word. It's so important for us to be a people of his word because the Holy Spirit brings the word alive to us. And in this way, we get to know God better. But what I, what, what I want to talk to you about this morning is hearing from God through prayer, hearing from God directly, if you like, uh, when we pray to him so that it becomes more of a conversation than just a one-way uh, monologue. Because... At the heart of Christianity is a relationship with the Father. That's what uh, we're all about. And no relationship prospers when the communication is just one way. So learning to communicate with God two ways, to actually hear from Him as, as well as Him hearing from us, is such an important investment that we can make in our Christian walk. Apart from anything else, it just makes God more real if you're hearing from Him yourself. And in this very unsettling time that we're in, 
I think we all need to press in and hear God for ourselves uh, more than ever because we're hearing voices all around us, uh, doom and gloom, bad news everywhere. But if we can press into God's perspective on this, he already saw this coming. He's got something to say to us. And so I really encourage us, let's not just be hearers of the word, let's be doers of the word um, at this time and um, act on what we're hearing and practice what we're hearing. So today we're talking about hearing from God through prayer. Now, you might be sat at home and thinking, you know what, this is pointless for me. I, I never hear from God. I tried it. He doesn't speak to me. Either that or my ears are blocked. I can't hear him. And you know what? I understand. I used to think that way myself uh, for a number of years. But I want to encourage you that if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can hear from God because he does speak to you. If you've got the Holy Spirit in you, God already speaks to you and you can hear from God. And to be honest, most of us hear from God more than we realize anyway. But how can I be so confident about this? Well, Jesus himself said in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 14, he said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Well, we could do with that right now. He will bring you, he'll bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. So did you catch that? The Holy Spirit t- speaks to us whatever he hears from Jesus. And the only qualification is that we have the Holy Spirit. It's not that we be a prophet or have some special anointing. It's just that we have the Holy Spirit. So I just want to reassure you this morning, if you have God's Holy Spirit living in you, you can hear from God and he does speak to you. But if this is true, why does it feel like he doesn't speak to us? Or why does it feel like we can't hear him? Well, the answer to that is, is quite simple. It's because we're used to receiving communication through the ears and the eyes, through our physical senses. But that's not generally the way that God communicates to us. God is spirit. So he speaks directly to our spirits. And so unless we're tuned in and listening to what's coming through our spirit, our spiritual ears, if you like, our spiritual eyes, then we are going to miss most things that God says. So the key thing is, is to learn how to tune into our spirit. Now, we can make a similar comparison with uh, radio, radio waves. We're surrounded right now by radio waves. And there's, there's countless messages and songs and uh, communications going on right around us with radio waves. But we can't hear them with our physical ears. To hear radio waves, you need, of course, a radio. And that's what our spirit represents. It's like our radio for hearing God speak. But take the analogy further. It's not just enough to buy a radio. Uh, you have to power it up. You have to switch it on. It's obvious, really, but we have to do the same with our own spirit. We have to activate our spirit to hear God. We have to turn it on. We have to power it up. But even that's not enough. If you switch on your radio, you'll probably just get a lot lot of crackling. You need to tune it in. You need to tune it in specifically to the frequency of the message you want to hear. And again, it's the same with our spirits. We can activate our spirit, but unless we tune it in to the way that God is speaking to us, we'll miss what he's saying. And those are the two things I want to unpack a bit further this morning, is powering up and tuning in. How do we do that with our spirits to hear God? It's very practical steps that we take, but they're very uh, essential, really, for hearing God more. So what do I mean, firstly, by powering up the spirit in us? What I'm really talking about is learning to shift our attention from the outer self, the outside self, the outer world around us, to the inner self where the spirit dwells in us. Because the problem with um, our attention is always, it's a, it's a fairly reactive thing. It's drawn to where the activity is. And all the activity in our life mostly is around us. From the moment you get up in the morning to when you go to bed, we get bombarded with messages. We get bombarded with sound. We get bombarded with sights. We're, we're demanded of in terms of attention from children, from others, from spouses, whatever, from family, friends, from work. And our our attention is constantly drawn from one thing to another. Rarely does it get drawn inwardly to the voice of the Spirit because the voice of the Spirit is subtle and quiet. So the activation of powering up our spirit, shifting our attention from the outside world to the inside world, has to be a very deliberate and conscious thing that we go through. Because left to its own devices, our attention will not wander from outside to inside of its own accord. It's just not drawn that way because this... The, the, the rhythms of the spirit are so quiet, so gentle. So to power up our spirit is a two-step process. And it's summed up well by the psalmist when he said in Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know 
that I am God. Two things, be still, power down the outside volume and know that I am God, power up the inside volume. So how do we do this practically? How do we still ourselves? Well, firstly, when we pray, it's sensible to go to a quiet place. Go to a quiet room in your house, shut the door, no TV, no phone, no distractions. Tell anybody who might distract you, like the children, that you're going to go and pray. Find yourself a quiet space. We tend to close our eyes when we pray, and that's, that's a good practice too, because it's just closing off from the visual distraction of the world. It's so easy to get distracted by what we see. Um, it's also traditional, isn't it, to put our hands together when we pray. All that means is we're ceasing from activity. We're shutting down all the outward activity of our life. And let's not forget about the soul, where our, our thoughts and feelings live. They're, they're very active too. We need to still down our thoughts and feelings. Though, let's face it, it's hard to stop thinking. Have you ever tried to stop thinking? You have to think about not thinking. It's impossible. So what you do with your thoughts is that you start directing them to the things of God, to dwell on the truths of God, the truths of who God is. And that's where the second step comes in. Know that I am God. Dwell on who God is. You see, we've been given bodies to respond to the outside world, but we've been given spirits to respond to the spirit of God. And so if you want to activate your spirit, you have to dwell on the things of God. You need to engage with God. That's what wakes up our spirit. So even if you don't feel like it, start worshipping, start praising, start thinking about God, start reading his word, start speaking out loud, declaring truths, whatever. Even if it feels um, wooden at first, the more you do it, your spirit starts picking up its ears and responding. It starts activating, it starts waking up because your spirit responds to the things of God. That's what it's designed to do. And what you find is the more you worship, the more you praise, the more you read out scripture, you start, it starts to become less of a, a chore. You're not doing it because you have to, you start doing it because you want to. And I'm sure you've experienced that during Sunday morning worship. It starts off maybe a bit leaden, but as you get going, suddenly you start soaring. This is because your spirit is powering up, it's getting activated. And it tends to be then that you start feeling the presence of God too. That's the other sign that the power up is done. So well done getting that far. We've moved our attention from the outside world to the inside world. We're activating our spirit. Now we're ready to hear from God. We've powered up. Now we need to tune in. We need to tune in to what God is saying. And really all this is about is understanding the way that God speaks to you personally. Tuning into the way he tends to speak to you personally, because the way he speaks to you is not necessarily the way he speaks to your neighbour. But it's also about knowing what not to tune into. You know, I said earlier that I used to think God didn't speak to me or I couldn't hear him. It's actually because I was tuning into the wrong frequencies, as it were. I was looking for his voice in the wrong place. What I was actually looking for was a booming voice of God or any voice that didn't sound like my own. Because according to my logic, if it sounded like my own, it must be my voice. It can't be God, which I understand looking back. But actually, it's not the case. When God speaks to you, if he uses words, he's most likely to do so using um, your, own, your own voice, your own head voice. But whilst I was looking for a big, booming Charlton Heston type voice, I couldn't find it. And so I gave up. I gave up trying. Now I understand that if God speaks to me in words, he'll use my own voice. We participate with him in hearing from him. Um, my wife, Jess, she tends to hear words from him more easily than I do. He'll speak to her in words and she's learned to recognize the difference between his voice speaking with her voice tone, but there's a peace about it. There's a, there's a conviction about it. There's an authority that comes with it that she's learned to sense and that tells her this is not just her voice. This is God speaking to her. And she's learned to go with it in faith. And sometimes you might just get one word or, or um, a sentence, but as you speak it out, he adds more. And a lot of this is about building our faith and confidence that we are actually hearing from God and we must be prepared to make mistakes. Um, and that's okay. But much better to make some mistakes and learn to, better to hear God than not be prepared to make any and never hear from him at all. And let's not fall into that trap. But there's other ways that God speaks with not just words. Um, I tend to hear from him more often with impressions in my spirit. Um, so I'll just get this impression or this sense of what the right thing is to do, what the right outcome should be. I just suddenly feel like I know what the right thing is to do where I didn't before. And again, it's not like lights across the heaven that tells me that was God. It's just subtle things like it comes with peace, it comes with conviction, it comes with authority. And it also often comes with a motivation, a passion, a joy to get, get it done, to do what, what you've just been given to do. It's a sense, an intuition that you learn is actually from God. Other people are uh, visual thinkers. If you're a visual thinker, you might get images in your head. 
suddenly a picture appears and you, it's your joy to interpret what God's saying through that. Or you might get visions even or, or dreams. Let's be open to these things because these are just the different channels God uses to speak to us according to who we are. And I think it's so precious that God doesn't use a one size fits all communication style with us. He tailors it to us. So learn the way that God uh, speaks to you. Maybe it's a bright idea, suddenly it comes into your mind. Maybe it's a memory of somebody that you'd forgotten about that you need to follow up. Whatever it is, if you're in the presence of God, you powered up your spirit, uh, tune in, be open to the way that he wants to share with you. But also remember the ways that he probably isn't going to share with you, like the audible voice happens now and again, but if you look for it every time, you'll be disappointed. Look for the subtle things and the ways that are tailored to you. That's how we can tune in to what he's saying. If we learn to practice these things, the more we do, the more we're likely to um, grow in confidence that God is speaking to us. And I, I, again, I say, whoever you are, it doesn't matter whether you consider yourself great in the spirit or little, if you have the Holy Spirit, he is speaking to you and you can hear him. So do not delay, get stuck in and, and tune in and find out what he's saying to you. But I just want to finish by um, one th a third step. So we've learned to power up, we've learned to tune in. Third step, it's equally important, is to check out. Check out what you just heard. We need to understand that that was definitely God speaking to us. Because I say the, the joy of, of, of searching for um, God's word is that we have to wrestle, we have to search. Um, but the, the, the downside, as it were, is that it's subtle. And he does speak with our own voice. He does use our own senses to hear him, our own spiritual senses. Um, so it's, it can be confusing. We can confuse his voice with our own. Um, even, we can even hear things that perhaps aren't from um, him or us, but maybe his spiritual enemies. We need to weigh these things. We shouldn't be scared. We shouldn't say, there's too much ambiguity in this, I'm just not going to do it. We should just check out what we're hearing. And Paul addresses this quite effectively in 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 5, verses 19 to 22. He says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. Don't give up. Instead, test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. This is Paul's advice. He's very strong on this. He says, look, don't shut down prophecy. Don't shut down hearing from God. Don't dismiss it. Don't write it off because you had a few failures or, or you're scared of failing. Instead, test everything. Check out everything and then you will grow in discernment of what's right. Elsewhere in the scriptures, Paul says, desire all the spiritual gifts, but above all, desire to prophesy. May we all hear from God. This is Paul's thinking, and guys, I urge you, take this seriously. This is for you, as much as it is uh, for Paul, even, as much as it is for me. So what are the tests? How can we test what we've just heard? There are some simple tests. The first one is, does it accord with Scripture? God will never contradict himself. He'll never give you a word that contradicts what he's written down in the Bible. It just won't happen. So if it, doesn't, if it does contradict Scripture, it's not from God. Simple. If it passes that test... Ask yourself a second question. When you received this word, did it bring peace or did it bring fear? If it doesn't bring peace, again, it's not from God. Simply because in Colossians 3 verse 15, Paul says, let the peace that comes from Christ rule your hearts, rule your spirits. So God is never going to give you something which is going to depose his rule of peace in your heart. He's just not going to do that. God doesn't fight against God. If you receive a word that takes away your peace, it's not from God. These are simple tests. A third test, which is very effective, is to share it with a, with a believing friend um, or a partner or family member, somebody you really trust in the Spirit and you trust has the Holy Spirit and, and is able to discern themselves. But it's often hard to hear from God for ourselves particularly, um, but other people can find it easier. So share with a trusted friend um, and get their witness on it too. A fourth test can be to ask God for confirmation. If it's a really important thing and you have to act on it, like move job or move house or, you know, marry somebody or whatever, important decisions, ask God in faith for a confirmation and he will um, honour that like he honoured Gideon in the Bible. And the fifth and final test is the watertight test. Write it down and see if it comes true. And of course, when that happens, you know it was God. But it's good to write these things down anyway for your faith to build. Because when you go back, sometimes you forget what God has said and you go back and you read them and say, you know what, that came true, that came true, that came true. And suddenly you start to believe, you know what, I do hear from God. Guys, we all hear from God. We just need to learn to power up, to tune in and to check out. And the more we do it, the more we realise 
that hearing from God's not just for the mega prophets, not just for the prophets in the Bible of old, it's for you and me, because we have the Holy Spirit living within us. So I hope you're encouraged by that. And I just want to um, close by giving uh, you an opportunity to hear from God in a new way if you've never heard from him before. I'm particularly talking to you at home. If you listen to this message and you realize, you know what, I can't hear from God because I haven't even taken that first step of giving my life to Jesus. You know, there's a promise for you if you're ready this morning to take that first step and to follow Jesus. He describes himself in the Bible as a shepherd. And in John chapter 10, verses 27 to 28, he promises this. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. That's the promise to you from the great shepherd himself, if you will give him your life, if you will stop going your own way, living the way that that, uh, you choose to live and go his way and live the way that he has for you to live, follow him as your great shepherd, then he will give you his Holy Spirit. You will hear his voice. And during this very difficult time that we're in, we need to hear God's voice. Each of us, all of us, we need that relationship with God reconciling through what Christ did for us on the cross. So if that's you this morning, I really encourage you, would you just be brave? Would you just take the greatest and and best step you could ever take and pray a prayer with me and pray it from the heart in faith and Jesus will answer you. God will answer you through Christ by the power of his Holy Spirit. So let's just pray for a second. I just encourage you to do this with me. Thank you, Lord. Father God, repeat after me in prayer. Father God, I recognize my need for you this morning. And I recognize that I've cut myself off from you by living my own way. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. And I receive your forgiveness this morning. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and to teach me to hear your voice so that I might follow you all the days of my life. Amen. If you just said that prayer with me this morning, congratulations. You've taken the first step on an amazing journey of following the great shepherd all the days of your life. And I just want to encourage you, if you did that, would you just press the button in the chat bar at the side of the screen that says, I put my hands up or I said yes, something along those lines. And we'd love to follow up with you and uh, join you on this great journey with the great shepherd, following him, his voice, all the days of our lives. My friends, let's be a people, not just of the word, but of his voice that we might always know what the Spirit is saying to the churches and be in step with each other. Amen. I hope you've really been blessed by this series and carry on practicing what we're hearing um, so that when we meet again, we'll have plenty of stories about what God's been saying to us at this time. Be blessed. I look forward to seeing you all soon.
If heaven now owns that vacant tomb How great is the hope that lives in you The passion that tore through hell like a rose The promise that rolled back death in its stone If freedom was worth the life you raised Where is my sin? Where is my shame? If love paid it all to have my heart How wonderful, how glorious I'll see freedom When I see that grave I'll see Jesus And from death to life I will sing your praise In the wonder Of your grace When I see that cross I'll see freedom When I see that grave I'll see Jesus From death to life I will sing your praise In the wonder Of your grace see that cross I'll see freedom when I see that grave I'll see Jesus from death to life I will sing your praise in the wonder of your grace when I see that cross I'll see freedom when I see that grave I'll see Jesus and from death to life I will sing your praise in the
Hey, what an incredible message from Paul. Paul, thank you for sharing this morning of how we can hear God through prayer. And I really do pray that this week that you can hear God speak to you. Hey, we're going to come around our tithes and offerings now. And this is the people who call Life Church home. We believe here at Life Church in, in sowing into the work of what we do as a church and, and really playing our part in building God's church and, and advancing his kingdom. So if you call Life Church home, then we would ask you to participate with us this morning. And if you're a guest or a visitor, then there's absolutely no pressure whatsoever. But if you would like to, then in the chat just next to me, there is a, gl- a, a give button and you can click on that this morning and you can partner with us. And I'd love just to pray for you as you are giving this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you invite us to build your church with you. Lord, that you invite us to play our part in seeing men and women and boys and girls grow in their faith and find you and find everything that is in you, Lord, your freedom, your peace and your joy. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for everyone giving this morning, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would know your provision, your blessing and your presence with them this week. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, what a great service that was. And thank you, Paul, so much for your insight and your words that you brought this morning. And I pray that they will speak to you, not just for the rest of today, but throughout the week. You know, just before we close, I just want to say that obviously this last week we've had the news uh, from our Prime Minister that lockdown is still not over. And I want you guys to know that we want the very best for you. We want the very best for our church and we will continue to be doing church online. I hope that you're enjoying uh, what, we, what we're trying to produce here at the moment. And, uh, and I believe that at this time, this is the best way for us, not only to reach you, but to reach many more people with the good news of who Jesus is. So I want to thank you for your continued support and I pray that this next week could be and will be your best week in God ever. God bless you church.